Bacon, banknotes, Benjamins. Cheddar, cheese, dead presidents. Fetty, Franklins, G's and Greens. Lincolns, Moolah, Pisos, Peas. It's all about the ma 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 ma. Less about the shimmy shimmy ya shimmy yay. Like Jay Z says, he's not a businessman. He's a business man. And to let him handle his business, damn. But isn't being a business not too far from being a product? And isn't being a product on the road to being sold? And isn't that exactly what they rapped about before hitting platinum and gold? Because it seems to me that from fighting the power, we've gone to climbing that tower. And freedom's been appropriated as buying brand attire. Freedom of the people rebranded as a market is Pinochet again, but in lyrical format. Because the corporate capturing of a critical subculture, then selling it back to people of colour, as Apple, Samsung, Nike and Chrysler, is not so different from the conquest of our lands, private exploitation of resources from our hands, raw materials taken then sold back to us for profit just as messages of subversion have been rebranded for the market. But I guess it's easier to celebrate the mass consumption of hip-hop than to ask who's generating the wealth and is actually on top and making the bacon, banknotes, Benjamins, cheddar cheese, dead presidents, Fetty, Franklins, G's and Greens, Lincolns, Moolah, Pisos, Peas. Formerly freedom fermented in street parties, a way to gain power as a disenfranchised culture. But now it seems power gaining is the culture. No more emphasis on free thinking for liberation, the critiques are only woke enough to pass for entertainment. Not woke enough that they're consequential, not like Zulu Nation's revolutionary potential. Now freedom is framed firstly as financial fixation, the freedom to consume, not socio-political emancipation. So the outcome is still the same for the majority. Most people of colour still face intergenerational poverty. To avert the problem we're told, keep up the grind so you can wine and dine, capitalism's apparent silver lining. But grinding is just rap language for pull yourselves up by your bootstraps, ignoring that our boots are being worn on others' feet, and very few are still rapping about that feat, and that cheat that means the same people are incarcerated, there's a social housing crisis and surveillance state, the ghettos are still ghettos, the consumers are still marginalised, the only thing that's changed is that the genre is being gentrified for the sake of the bacon, banknotes, Benjamins, cheddar cheese, dead presidents, Fetty, Franklins, G's and Greens, Lincolns, Moolah, Pisos, Peas. My outlining the co-option of hip-hop by capitalism is not just condemnation, but a speculation about whether hip-hop is not just a metaphor of a marketization of all resistance, the co-option of our other messages. T-shirts about being a feminist made by women in sweatshop factories. Anti-capitalist as an aesthetic vibe, liberals buying clothes for double their price. Ally as a hashtag used by allies have moved out of our neighborhoods. And Californian avocado-eating vegans wasting water on avocado growth. The techniques of resistance have never been so mortal, from the decentralised screams of the dispossessed to the modern-day accumulation by dispossession. Soon enough, Kanye will rap about decolonising the university. Snoop will ask you to queer your cookbook, Jay-Z subvert your wardrobe and Drake your bed. Because there's nothing more alarming than poor people of colour claiming power, but nothing so easily disarming as misdirecting us towards only the bacon, banknotes, Benjamins, cheddar, cheese, dead presidents, Fetty, Franklins, G's and Greens, Lincolns, Moolah, Pisos, Peas.